Okay, let's take a look at the Reformation, or otherwise known as the Protestant Reformation, that occurred at the beginning of the 1500s. And as you can see, the essential question here is, is we want to see obviously what caused the Reformation, but also what different types of impacts it had, particularly on the social structure, but the church as well in 16th century Europe. So as we've been learning, ideas such as humanism, individualism, secularism that we learned caused Europeans to question many things. And one of those things was uh, the Bible and the church and the church's teachings and the church's policies. And here we're talking about the uh, Holy Roman Catholic Church, right? The printing press uh, by Johannes Gutenberg is a really critical and key and timely invention that it's going to allow Martin Luther and his ideas from the 95 Theses and other contemporaries and supporters to spread their ideas, their complaints, their problems with the church and its perceived corruptions and help push the what would become the Reformation into existence. So obviously those people were called reformers. Anybody that wants to reform or fix certain problems, whatever they may be. In this case we're talking about the, the reformers led by Martin Luther of the Protestant Reformation. And you see the word protest embedded in this idea of the Protestant Reformation. Let's look at this graphic to get kind of a visual understanding and, and we're going to back up a little bit here first. So if you think about after Jesus' death uh, in the centuries that followed, cr the earliest Christians developed what is known as the Christian Church. Now this graphic shows that the, the core Christian Church ended up splitting into two ways. We've got the, the Holy Roman Catholic Church and then you have the Eastern Orthodox and these two divisions still exist today. Most Americans aren't probably as familiar with Eastern Orthodox but sometimes if you look in, in particularly uh, Eastern European immigration areas like Northeast Minnesota um, I know when I visit my wife uh, it's the town of Hibbing on the Iron Range there are Greek Orthodox and Serbian Orthodox from the different um, uh, early immigrant miners that came from Eastern and, and Southeastern Europe at the time and, and created their Orthodox churches. And one final thing to note is uh, the term Catholic just in general and what it means. And you'll see this word often in, in religious context um, as well as other contexts too, which is Orthodox, right? Um, so they're you know, Judaism has a has a, has a division uh, or denomination of Orthodox Jews, and that's what that means. Now, that division that occurred between that earliest Christian church, when it was unified, into the Catholic Church that kind of took over most of Western Europe, and into the Orthodox Church that. Uh, came to dominate most of Eastern Europe, again, Russian Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, um, is known as the Great Schism in world history. Now catching back up, again you have the Christian Church, we have the Great Schism here in 1054, and as we move along into the early 1500s we end up getting the Protestant Reformation that causes more shifts in denominations. And so with the breakup of a new type or branching off of the Catholic Church, we get Protestantism and Protestant, Protestantism itself divides into many of these very familiar um, denominations that you can see right here in Minnesota or in the United States and there are uh, even further breakdowns of 
different Lutherans, right? Wisconsin Synod, Missouri Synod, ELCA, etc. There are many different types of Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, etc. Um, and then there's all kinds. Of, there, there are way more than this. Okay, but this kind of gives you a breakdown of why there is uh, so much diversity, and it goes back to the Great Schism, and they had their own branchings off in the Orthodox churches. And then, of course, the Roman Catholic Church uh, has its own small divisions, um, such as the Jesuits. And then uh, the Protestant Reformation uh, created a whole branch of Protestants that uh, further broke off and branched off into their uh, theological differences. Here we have a good map visual that allows us to see, you know, at approximately six, by 1600, uh, where had the Protestant Reformation taken hold? And so you can see down here the Roman Catholic still largely dominated. Of course, down here is where it was headquartered and still is to this day in Vatican City within Rome in Italy. But uh, Spain, uh, France, in the southern parts uh, were obviously closest in geographic proximity. They did very well at retaining their hold on the kings and queens and the people to stay within the Catholic faith and traditions. But uh, Germany, being what we know as Germany now up here, it was allowed to spread farther north, and so that's why a lot of people, even some of you that uh, know that you have maybe some of these backgrounds ethnically from from your uh, European immigrant forefathers are probably some form of Protestant. And just to clarify, uh, we won't get into it, but uh, when King Henry VIII, if you recall that story, he flipped his church to get a divorce um, from one of his wives. He flipped England into the, the Church of England, also known as Anglican, here. Um, and then Calvinist, Calvinism by John Calvin um, is a is a branch of, of Protestantism as well. So if you have ancestry from the British Isles in the UK, this could be why, but there, you know, Catholicism, Catholicism uh, remained there as well. And then Ireland, of course, had all kinds of Religious violence is, is uh, you know, this is now Northern Ireland right up here, um, between Irish Catholic and Irish Protestantism. A quick overview then, just exactly what was Martin Luther's concerns with the church. He called them the 95 Theses, and he posted them on the church door in Wittenberg, Germany and Martin Luther was a was a Catholic priest so he knew he wasn't some outsider uh, he, he knew the Catholic Church very well and his biggest problem perhaps was the sale of indulgences this idea that the church was uh, allowing people to buy these indulgence certificates in which people were paying to get their family members and friends out of the purgatory this kind of holding pattern um, and, and until they could get into heaven. Now, Luther said that the Bible gives people entrance into heaven by simply faith alone. There's no money that you need to pay. There's no even good works, per se, that you need to do if you believe in Christ as he interpreted the Bible to say, that's enough to get you into heaven. And you can read this stuff here, but obviously this was bad news bears for Martin Luther. But we're not going to get into the details here. So here's a visual of Martin Luther posting his 95 complaints to the church door. I'm not sure how, but it does happen. So might as well spell it out that you're not to get these two confused. Uh, much different time periods of the 
early to mid 1500s versus the early to mid 1900s and uh, two very important leaders Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that led the United States' civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s wasn't, wasn't born. His father, a, a, a pastor, was not, did not name his son with the name Luther. But after he visited Germany, about four or five years after his son was born, I believe he was born in 1929, um, he changed his name, I think in about 1934 or so, uh, and added the, the Luther name because he was so inspired by the Martin Luther of Central Europe. Now if we look at the Catholic Church hierarchy, those of you that are practicing Catholics will be familiar with this, or should be, and some of you that come from uh, non-theism or Protestantism maybe are less familiar with this general hierarchy, but maybe you've heard of these terms. But here's the top, and then the cardinals are beneath the Pope, and many cardinals are ones that will, would end up being selected to become the next Pope after the Pope dies or resigns, as the most, most recent one did, Pope John Paul II before Pope Benedict. And to look at some other things here, we of course have the Gothic, Gothic Catholic uh, cathedral architecture that is common in Europe drives a lot of European tourism. Um, you can see why they have the gargoyles and demons. People always wonder. There's your answer. And of course, what's neat about traveling in Europe is that you see uh, a lot of this old architecture and it's driven by the Catholic Church, the Christian faith, and a lot of the iconography that you see here all comes about from the Catholic Church that dominated the, the Dark Ages right into its some of its heyday in the medieval times. And then of course as we wrap this up there's the idea that the Renaissance, uh, this rebirth of ideas and economy and trade in the European areas after the Black Death caused a major reformation in a huge institution, the, the Holy Roman Catholic Church, and it's going to have a lot of consequences that move forward that will drive European colonialism and make the modern world that we have today.